What's up, guys? It's Ian Rifkin, uh, Senior Director of Recruiting at Endeavor, Head of Music Careers at the Digilog, and you're listening to the Unsigned Podcast. How important do you think researching a role is? I mean, I think this is like an obvious question, but I still want to ask it because oftentimes people just be like, oh, I see the role and, and I apply for it. It's just whatever. Yeah. I'll out on the fly. So how important kind of a two-part question how important do you think um you know researching the role is, is the first one then the second part of that is how important do you think the you know systemizing like an outreach plan after that to say okay i applied for that you know i did my research i applied for this role and in, in kind of structuring those things out because you need a system because you're not going to be able to apply for one job and just kind of hope you get it. You really need to, you know, get yeah. some bats going. And so, yeah. Can you just talk a little bit about that? Finding the role, researching the role, follow up with the role, how to do that appropriately. Yeah. I mean, you, you should, you should be, you know, reading job. I mean, we spend a lot of time writing job descriptions, right? It's not, I mean, and, and more often than not, I will say, you know, they're unique to the role. Right. Very rarely are we just going to like, you know, put out a generic, you know, admin assistant. We need someone to answer phones and write emails and, and manage calendars. Like that's we, we do, you know, put more into writing most of the job descriptions. So um, if you're not reading them fully before you apply, you're doing a disservice to yourself. And I understand the, um, you know, the, the anxiety and just the, you know, the, everything around trying to find a job after you even if it's not just your first job, I mean, even now, if I was applying for jobs, it's an anxious thing. It's a, it's a tough experience. So um, you need to be, you need to be researching at least reading the job description to its, you know, to its entirety. Um, and I would even take it one step further, um, maybe two steps further, going to the company's website, just trying to get a sense of who the company, even if you think you know the company, do the research, find out about its history, find out about recent projects that they're that they're working on, new clients that have been signed, whatever. Um, and then do a little bit of research before you apply, if you're able to, um, as to who works there, right? So I think we'll probably get a touch on LinkedIn. I'm shocked that hasn't come up uh, already, but um, at some at, at some point we're we're probably going to get into it. But um, I mean, right, right here. a massive yeah. resource. I mean, is, you're talking sure. about an incredible resource that you, that I, we, I didn't have it when I was in college. I think it maybe it just launched, but nobody had it. It wasn't cool. Um, you know, you, you have the ability to now find anybody and virtually everybody has one. I mean, anybody who works at any company any, that exists. Any serious, any serious professional. Has right. One. And They're some not really so serious professionals, but right, right, pretty right, much right. everybody's got right. a LinkedIn account. So if you want, if you, I mean, if you're a more industrious student looking for, you know, and you don't have, you know, connections, family, friend connections to break in. I mean, the first thing they always recommend to somebody is, okay, where do you go to school? Oh, you go to Loyola Marymount. Uh, why don't you run a, run a filtered search in LinkedIn and try to find alumni or current students of Loyola Mar Marymount. I'm using them as an example for some reason, they're top of mind, but um, find somebody who currently or used to go to that school who currently who used to work at a company that you're interested in or a company whose job description that you just read. Um, reach out. Like, it can't hurt. And yeah, you're going to have to play the numbers game when you're doing any kind of random outreach. You can't expect to apply to one job and get that job. You can't expect to you know, reach out to one person and 100% of the time get a response. Um, but anything that you can do to kind of, you know, hedge your bets and, 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 you know, get some insider information is going to be helpful. Um, so you need to be researching. I mean, you need to be care. It's the same, you know, same reason you need to be careful about having just like a form cover letter that you submit to every single job application that you submit to. I've seen a lot of people make mistakes where it's like addressed to a specific company and then they apply to a different company with it. And it's just like little things that like, and you know, we're not expecting you to be an expert when you come to us as an assistant, but we do expect that you have high attention to detail, right? And and these are the little things that, you know, it's maybe it's not going to make the difference between you getting a job, but it certainly could make the difference between you not getting a job. You know, not getting that, that yeah. not piquing somebody's interest enough to like, you know, want to spend a half hour interviewing you, right? Yeah, so, I, I think I, I learned this like early on is really just like, 
old cliche, right? Knowledge is really power, right? If you, I, I remember specifically when this happened, it was freshman year of college, I was managing an artist, a friend of mine who was a couple of years older than me in the business, managing somebody who was starting to have some success. He was like, Murph, you got to be on these blogs every day. I was like, nah, man, I don't really care about what other people are doing. Yeah. We're focused on what we're doing. And he was like, Murph, you got to be on these blogs. You need to know what's going on. I was like, ah, him and Han. And I finally did it. And I just like fell in love with that process. Naturally, I was like, you know, I've always been kind of into what the, the going ons of things. And it was mm-hmm. like, oh, this really worked. Now that just exploded like throughout my entire career. Like I love going and doing the dig, you know, the digging on, on any sort of project that I'm working on. It's so important that you do that. And especially doing this early on because you are developing more skills and how to better uh, present yourself how to uh, have great talking points. If you're like, Hey, I want to work at Endeavor and I have no idea what you guys do. I just know entertainment and this, when you, you know, somebody reaches out and they're like, yeah, let's set up a phone interview. You have no idea what to talk about. And so like, you know, you're, 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 you know, cutting your nose off to spite your face. The problem with that is that, and I understand the instinct to say like, Hey, I don't really know a lot about your company and I want to learn more. An interview is not the forum right. for you to learn a lot more. You, you have to do as much learning as you can coming into that conversation, um, because if you're coming in, you know, if you're if you're if you're, I mean, the real there's there's a hundred hundreds of you know hungry students, recent grads that would be lined up just to get an interview for a job, and you have to honor that and respect you know the process and and you know come as your you best come correct. self, right? Yeah, you got to yeah. come prepared. You, you, you really do. And so, yeah, I want to talk about LinkedIn for a second too. You know, we were talking about, um, you know, uh, systemizing things and, and something I did early on was just that I'd be like, okay, great. I'm going to apply for this job, right? Uh, do my research, figure out if it's the right role for me, apply for the job, then do more research, go over onto LinkedIn, find those people, connect with them. And then those people that do accept my connection, I would reach out to them and I'd say, you know, I'd have like the boilerplate stuff that I would, you know, kind of copy and paste from each thing, but it's really setting up those systems so that I could do the numbers game. It was like, okay, now I'm going to say, Hey, Ian, uh, you know, thanks for accepting my connection. Uh, you know, I applied for this role. Not sure if you have anything to do with that role, but you know, if you could, uh, would, would love to know if you could point me in the right direction, appreciate the time. Look forward to hearing back simple things like that, that, uh, you know, I, I saw successful, you know, and uh, just like you said, it's really utilizing the tools that are in front of you uh, in, in LinkedIn. When you're trying to get a job, there's not really a better resource. Like you could go on Twitter and, you know, Instagram and see, learn a little bit more about the people. And I think that's good for just background context. If you do get to the interview phase now, hey, maybe you can talk about that fun little anecdote. Maybe you guys went to the same place or like the same thing. Uh, Again, build a relationship with the person that, that you're interviewing with. But uh, yeah, yeah, I think just the system piece is, is really important because it is a numbers game. Part of it is. For sure. Yeah. Um, One thing, uh, you know, I guess we can kind of pair these two things together. Um, you know, we talked about a, a little bit before you mentioned it a second ago, just about, you know, standing out um, in, in the process. We talked about, you know, if you don't do something, you're kind of standing out in a negative way, right? If you don't know uh, enough about the company. Um, what are some things that people could do to, to actually stand out fresh out of school? You know, they yeah. don't have, you know, a, 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 let's say a back catalog of work, right? They haven't worked, uh, you know, with an artist or anything big. They just went to school and they worked on a couple of small projects. How can they stand out? Is it, you know, I'm curious to hear if, if you have any crazy yeah. people like showing up and being like, hey, like randomly finding you and trying to do stuff in person. You know, what are some no no's? That, that's probably not the way to do it. Yeah, that's yeah, probably yeah. not the way to do it. I was um, say, what are some no no's uh, and what are some like positive things that people could do? I've seen some crazy stuff. I've seen some really creative stuff. I mean, some of it has been. Let's say that. Let's say that. I like creative a lot. Like, what are yeah. some of like the creative positive ways that you can stand out, um, you know, to get, to catch a recruiter's eye, to catch anybody's yeah, eye. Yeah. I think that like one of the more accessible creative ways that you can stand out is, you know, not just like lean on, I think, I think a lot of the, the generation who's now looking to break in, I mean, these are, these are 
these are young professionals who grew up with social media. They grew up with social media. Uh, I mean, you and I, you know, it, kind of, it kind of came about like around like high school. It was a slow burn, and like maybe we got into it in college or shortly after. Um, people, you know, fast forward ten years, people who are graduating college now or in school now um, have always had it. And I think that you know, there, there's value to having an Instagram, and 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 you know, we talked about the value of LinkedIn, which I can't um, I can't overstate. But um, a really good website, a really clean, simple website that maybe has your resume, but also a little bit of like information, something that maybe you would include in a cover letter, but like make it the about me or the bio section of a website. Um, I think most of these websites, like you, you, you can do it for free yeah. for like 50 bucks, you know, you make a Wix account and, and just, you know, have a site where you're, you know, driving people to, to see whatever it is that you might be working on. Um, so that's a really accessible way. Um, I've seen people, you know, I've seen I've seen students record, um, you know, personalized video resumes um, that they've managed to get in the hands of, of recruiters and HR people or maybe even somebody who works, you know, in, in a department that they're interested in. And, um, you know, that person opens up, you know, their email or, or their Instagram and it's a recorded message, you know, of somebody talking about all the things that they're doing and why they're excited about what you know, the company that, you know, they're, they're, they're sending it to is doing. And like, that's something that really stands out because we get to see personality shine through. Um, so that, that's something is really, and I mean, I've seen crazy stuff. Like, you know, we had a box of cupcakes that was sent to our HR department at universal, Love it. uh, that was a can, a candidate had put their resume inside of a box of a, a handful of resume. There was like five or six of the resumes. Nope put inside of a box of cupcakes and there was one cupcake for every person who worked in that HR office. And, um, like, it's not did like, they get, do, did they it's get not the like, phone interview? did they get the phone interview? Oh, they for, they for sure got a thank you call nice. that turned into, you know, a general informational interview. Uh, and I won't say whether or not they got hired. And I won't say that you have to do something like that. Like they, right, we're not bribing HR people over here, right? We're not yeah, bribing yeah, anybody, yeah, yeah. but like, that's, that's definitely a way. And I'm, I'm, I hope that people don't start sending me cupcakes after this, but, <laughs> um, uh, but like, you know, it's, it, it is the, it, way to stand it's out. the effort. It's symbolic yeah. of the effort that somebody goes in to stand it, out from a crowd. Exactly. Right? It's like you send somebody a thousand dollars. That's a big no, no. Right. But like sending a, a cupcake or sending like a, a yeah. gift card for Starbucks or something. Honestly, like don't even send, don't, don't even, don't even send. First of all, don't send me cupcakes, please. But also <laughs> you don't have to spend money. You don't have to like, you know, I've had right. candidates. Yeah. We're talking about, you know, 2019, you know, towards the tail end of my time with Universal Music Group. Uh, it's happened to me a couple of times. I had, you know, an in, uh, I had, you know, our, 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 you know, the, the, you know, the mail cart pull up in front of my office, hand me a, you know, a, a, a manila envelope. And I wasn't expecting mail, open up the envelope, boom, hard copy of a resume that was physically mailed to me. Yep. Like that sound like, I don't think that I've gotten, Yo, you know, th I, that probably hasn't happened in, in 15 years. I mean, not I, since like email, right? I, I, like I love it got that. in my hands, right? Yeah, it got exactly. in my hands. That was the important thing. We interviewed that person. So yep. like whatever, just be, be creative. And it's, you know, it's, it's hard. It is it's, right. You know? Exactly. I, I think um, to your point, it's hard. It is a numbers game. You know what I mean? There's so many people that you're trying to stand out. And so it is those little things like going the extra mile because that just shows that you care, right? You had to look up the address. You had to get the name. You had to go to the actual, you know, building. I mean, I literally did that for an artist that I was working with years ago. Yeah. Same exact thing. It was like 2015, 2016. We wanted certain people to like hear the new music. We like stopped by, dropped the bottle off, sent a personal invite to like the listening party for the album, like old school shit, because it's like, that's yeah. how you stand out. You go above and beyond. It's a small gesture. And it shows that like, oh, this person is serious. Like they're trying yeah. to be unique. I think the other way too that we, we didn't really talk about is that if it's taking you a little bit of time to, to get into the mix of, of interviews and things like that, it's about doing work. Like you shouldn't be stopping. It's like, hey, you want to be a, a, a talent booker at a venue or, or, or you want to be a manager or you want to be a creative person at a label. Nobody is stopping you from making creative work outside of that. And to your point, it's about having that, uh, uh, you know, creating a website, doing great stuff and, and you know, um, 
making yourself stand out, you know, and by doing great work, just doing the yeah. work. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and I, I'm thinking about the first student who figured out the way to make their resume look like a Spotify playlist. It's a trend I've seen over the last year. I've seen a, maybe a dozen of them, like whoever it was that thought of that first, like, man, like what a, like, what a way to stand out. I'm, sh I'm sure that, you know, yeah, I'm, sh I'm sure that they got the, whatever job they were applying for. Cause it was amazing. But like, be, be the person, like you don't have, you can do that, right? You can follow the trend, but like try to figure out something, you know, just a creative way. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to be spending money. You don't have to be overextending yourself. You, you can, there are, there are simple ways to get noticed. You just have to be really invested in, in, in finding those ways to break through. The, the other thing we'll say too, is that you don't need to know anybody. You know, a lot of times you're like, ah, in any field they're like oh shit I don't yeah. really know. But if you do that absolutely helps you know what i mean but you still have to come correct you still have to be able to know how to do the work and do it and if you don't know anybody a great way to get to know people is to do great work you put out yeah. great work on a small scale you are an assistant you start to build up your connections among the other assistants you know i'm 15 years into the music business the people i was with there's a ton of people that aren't around anymore and the people that are it's like yeah. now there's a different relationship that we have with one another. Now, you you know, your peers are starting to become into positions of power that that's when you can start to lean on them for different things and, and you can help them and, and, and things like that. So it takes time. People are still just like, hey, I want to know somebody to get the big job. It's like, just focus on doing the work yeah. because yeah. knowing somebody, knowing somebody the door. It, it, I mean, it used to be more, far more important than it is yes, now, but I yeah. think now with social media and now with, you know, a, a lot of companies, I mean, a lot of companies are, you know, part of their commitments to, you know, providing, you know, equitable and, and diverse and inclusive workplaces is they're not only going to be hiring the, you know, the sons and daughters of their executives and their clients, right? I think that referrals have always been, you know, looked at as, as the only way to get in, you know, to the music industry. And it's just not the case anymore. Yeah. You, know, you don't need to know somebody. You can get to know somebody, you know, get somebody knows you, right? Like you can build a relationship and get your foot in the door in a way that, you know, maybe 15, even, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago, you needed to have the same last name as somebody who's already in the building, right? You just, it's not, it's not true. Yeah. And, and it really is. It's about uh, sometimes you got to do that free work. It's adding value to somebody else. So maybe you're over here, you're working this job, but you want to be over here. It's like put in some time, do some free work, show your value, show your value to that other person. That's how you mm -hmm. yeah, kind of do all these things, help yourself stand out, create a real resume, build up some, some foundational pieces that you need. So dope, man. Hey, we're coming down to time. I had one kind of final question for you. Um, sure. you know, before we, we jumped into the very last section here, but um, I want to talk about making lateral moves. Sometimes people take a gig, you know, uh, fresh out of the gate and they're like, Hey, I'm just trying to get, get in where I fit in. Let me just get this job, get, you know, yeah. start to build my resume. How does someone, if they take a job that they don't like at a company um, to try to, you know, make a lateral move to a, a different department within the same company, what are some yeah. tips? How does somebody do that? I mean, when I was young, I, I didn't have success doing that at, at a, you know, in a couple of the spots that I was at when I was trying to go here. And it was like, I don't think I had, um, you know, I didn't really understand the value piece and, and doing some free work over here and building stronger relationships. So yeah, can you talk about that? How to, yeah. how to kind of best make one of those moves? You know, the first thing is like, you, yeah, you have to, even if it's a, a position that you find yourself in that you're not excited about long-term, right? You know, you still have to kick ass at that job, right? You still have to do such an undeniably amazing job that it gets noticed where, you know, that we talk about like now you don't just networking isn't just a skill that you find to get a job. It, it's a break in and then you stop doing it. You know, you, you show up to work on your first day and you're still interviewing, you know, every day you're showing up to work, even with a job interviewing for your next job, um, whether you know it or not, whether it's intentional or not. So you, you have to be intentional about networking within the company once you get in. I mean, it's very rare that you're just going to be isolated and insulated and only working with, you know, the same three or four people every day. In most cases, these, these companies are pretty collaborative. If you're in marketing, you're, you know, collaborating with, you know, radio and, 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 you know, A&R and streaming and digital and et cetera. Like there, there is a lot of crossover. So you should, find yourself with opportunities to get to know people in other areas of the business, you have to take advantage of those opportunities. Um, so when an opportunity,
opportunity comes up in another department, maybe somebody's approaching you and trying to pull you over, or if you see a job opening in there, you have somebody you can go to and say, hey, you know, I know that I'm doing X, but you're really interested in what you guys are doing and why, you know, and, and you know, open up a conversation that way. Um, the second thing is, sorry if you can hear my dogs barking in the background. Uh, this, the second thing, and I really want to stress it because I didn't have it when I was, when I was you know, early in my career. I didn't work at a company that had an HR organization. Um, get to know and partner with your HR professionals at your company. Um, HR, recruiters, learning and development. I mean, there's, I mean, HR is pretty general. I mean, there's you know, a dozen different jobs or more within you know, the HR uh, department in most cases at a lot of the big companies, at least, um, get to know these people. Um, they'll become advocates for you. They are your business partners and they are there to help guide you not only through, not only to get you, you know, recruiting into the company, but to guide you through your career with that company. Um, I mean, there are people at Endeavor who I can speak to who have been with the company for 20 years and have had you know, five or six different positions over that time. And they're spread across divisions and departments. And, you know, they've never had to look for a job elsewhere because they're always putting themselves in a position to take that new job within the same organization. Right. So, you know, as important as it is to like, you know, network among your peers and among your colleagues that are, you know, across other departments, um, lean into the, you know, if you're fortunate enough to be part of a company that has an HR organization, we are here to, 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 you know, partner with the business and, and partner with you as an individual um, to help you grow and help you develop and, and provide opportunities. So um, you're doing a major disservice if you don't know who your HR person is. I mean, like reach out to them now. Yeah. Well said. Well said. Yeah, I mean, they they know sure. every, because everybody at the company has to go to them to figure out the job, the new jobs, the, the new openings, what the, you know what the yeah. job descriptions are going to be and like stuff, yeah so. i mean i've heard every stereotype in the book i you know i've seen all the memes i mean like you know hr is i think that you know again like 20 years ago like oh if you if you knew your hr person like you were doing something wrong you know, there's the principal's office like that's not what it is like yeah. yeah it's a very very small very small percentage of the time that an hr you know person is, is spending on disciplinary you know actions like that is not what we're here for we're we're mapping out you know, we're partners to the business. We're mapping out individuals' careers um, and, and movement and development opportunities and recruiting and diversity and inclusion. I mean, it's, it's and, really and like business compensation strategy. and payrolls. Yeah, it's 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 an operations department more than it is an administrative support department. Yep. Um, yep. So that's that's a, it's an important distinction to make now because there's so much out there of like you know HR is the principal's office like. You know, once you work at a company that has one, like you realize like what it is, and maybe you don't, but like, you should realize what it is that, you know, I'm not speaking for myself here, but for all my colleagues, like what what they're doing every day. It's 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 yeah. it's an incredible, uh, you know, position that they're in where they have exposure to the whole business, and they're not, you know, just kind of isolated in these little pockets. So um, uh, call on your friendly HR person. <laughs> yeah, I love it. All right, man. Well, hey, we're coming down to time. Uh, before you get out of here, uh, again, appreciate you coming through. Uh, but yeah, what are you working on that you're excited about? And uh, where, where can people get at you, uh, you know, if they have any additional questions or anything like that? Yeah, man, uh, we're, I mean, at, at Endeavor, um, definitely, you know, recommend uh, following our LinkedIn, our Instagram accounts. We do a lot of announcements on, you know, not only the excellence program that we're doing with Diddy, which is finishing up this week, uh, but or, or by the time this airs, I guess it'll be last week. Um, but we have other programming that we do throughout the year uh, where we're going to be on campus, when we're going to be, um, you know, we have a, a, another educational series called Next. Um, so if, you, if you're interested in learning about what we're doing uh, in hiring at Endeavor, then follow our socials. Um, and then I also, I mean, worth plugging the Digilog because I've become, you know, really close to that organization over the last year. Um, Digilog's a, a professional music and tech uh, community, and, and we've got you know 30 plus thousand professionals um, and aspiring professionals across the world um, who are you know engaging in all of these um, virtual and live events, and we have a, a ton of educational resources like podcasts, blogs, newsletters that go out um, just to give people places to start to you know educate themselves on the industry. So. 
Um, we have a ton of cool things coming up on the Digilog. You can follow us on Instagram and LinkedIn there as well. And um, yeah, I mean, just, you know, th there's no shortage of resources. There's, there, you know, podcasts like this, um, you know, YouTube video, like, the, you know, there's, there are so many resources available to young people now and people who are trying to break in. Um, you know, if, if, if you're hungry enough and you've decided that this is what you want to do, um, there are definitely ways and even most of them, you know, free ways that you can, you know, start to educate yourself and, and you know, position yourself to make an entry. So, um, yeah, it's exciting time. It's exciting time to be, to yeah. be, in, to be in entertainment, to be in music in, uh, in particular. It's, um, things are definitely on an upswing. Yeah. Yeah. But, but long time, long time coming. Long time coming. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, hopefully. But, but Hey man, thanks again. I really appreciate you coming through. Uh, hope, hope, you know, for everybody listening, we, we add a lot of value. I know uh, you did for me in this conversation. And yeah, man, just great to catch up. Glad to hear things are going well. Yeah, man. Um, and you guys are staying busy, man. All right. Sounds All right, good. man. We'll definitely talk soon, man. All right. See you. All right, man. Peace.